karuna karuna tarangi takshi drita bhasha kusha kushpa bana chapam animadi biravritam mayu kai raham nityeva vibhavaye Anna Kalita Sadrishya Chibuka Shri Virajita Kamesha Baddha Mangalya Sutra Shobita Kandhara Kanakangara Keyura Kamaniya Bhujanvita Ratnagraiveya Chintaka Lola Mukta Phalanvita Kameshwara Prema Ratna Mani Pratipanastani Nabhyala Vala Romali Lata Pala Kuchadvai Namaste and welcome to another ecstatic episode of Lalita Sahasranam. So this time we're going to begin with the Namas. But then at the end, I'm going to reveal something new and wonderful. <laughs> so don't go away. Nama 29. Anakalita Sadrishya Chibuka Shri Virajita. She has the most beautiful chin. <laughs> Remember, we're describing her form from the head downward. So we did the hair and the ears and the nose and the teeth, even the lips. Now we're talking about her chin. Soundarya Lahari 67 says, Your incomparable chin, touched by the forepart of the hand of Shiva, is raised frequently out of his eagerness to drink the nectar of your lower lip. So these are confidential pastimes. Uh, that Shiva and Shakti are lovers. Shiva, after he created himself, created her because he wanted a mate. So in this world, everyone feels this need, this primal need for a mate. But the problem is, <laughs> the mates in this world are only troublesome. <laughs> especially in Kali Yuga. Why? Because nobody follows Dharma. See, if everyone followed Dharma, then there wouldn't be any scarcity because this centralization of resources would not be there. See, out of greed, certain people uh, capitalize and buy up all of the produce on the market. So somebody has control over the grain market, somebody has control over vegetables, somebody has control over building materials, and so on. Huge industrial and corporate conglomerates now control everything. But this is completely wrong, and it causes scarcity. In Vedic civilization, everything is completely decentralized. Everybody has their own land and their own uh, resources to develop. And everyone follows the Dharma, so when you get married, you stay married. <laughs> People today are too easily uh, separated and divorced. So because of that, people develop this attitude that Oh, well, if it doesn't work out, I can just, you know, leave him or divorce or whatever. And because of this, the women become degraded. And Krishna says, when the women become degraded, the whole civilization collapses morally. Uh, it may not collapse materially. It may, materially, it may appear to be going fine, you know. But morally, it's a wreck. And people are miserable. They're insecure because they know, oh, if I just say the wrong thing, maybe my mate will leave me. So because of this, everyone's in anxiety. 
See, nobody can think of God because they're so entangled in all this mess of problems. Huh? One Brahmin came to the Buddha and he said, it's a tangle, Lord. The whole world is entangled in a tangle. Tell me, where is this tangle untangled? Now, it's interesting because the Sanskrit word, uh, which was probably prevalent at that time, for tangle also means karmic involvement. So even though the modern translators kind of skip over this, the real secret of why the world is in trouble and why everybody is suffering is because of their previous bad actions, their previous adharma. So if one begins to act according to dharma, regardless of the material cost, then in later life or in the next life, one reaps the benefit. See, people are so focused on short-term problems that they ignore the real issues of life, which is, what kind of karma are you creating for your future life? So, anyway, <laughs> end of lecture. <laughs> Next is 30. Kamesha Bada Mangalya Sutra Shobhita Kandhara Her neck is adorned with the Mangala Sutra, this is a, a little necklace of three threads that married women wear, tied by Kameshwara. Sundarya Lahari says, the three lines on your neck indicating the number of strings in the auspicious cord fastened at the time of your wedding shine like boundaries, delimiting the position of the gamut the repositories of the treasures of various kinds of melodious ragas. This is deep. Huh? In other words, when a woman is married in Vedic society, uh, a triple thread is tied around her neck. And as in the case of Lalita, anyway, this mirrors the three auspicious lines in her neck. To have three lines in the neck or on the waist is considered extremely auspicious by the Vedas. This is the sign of a high class personality. So she has all the qualities and signs of a very high class person. And these three lines, huh, they delimit the gamut, and what is that? The gamut is the range of notes used in a raga. And there are three types of ragas. Uh, I don't want to get too technical. <laughs> but anyway, one type of raga, in one type of raga, the drone is on the tonic. In another type, it's on the fifth. And in the third type, it's on the third. Very few people know about that one. It's pretty esoteric. But it does lead to some very interesting tonal effects in the raga. And um, it's not heard much anymore. You know, people don't get proper training nowadays in music. So they're mostly aiming for popularity, you know. So they don't really get the deep training in the, in the music. And so many of these uh, wonderful musical effects have fallen into disuse. That's really too bad. So she's a singer of ragas. Uh, even her speech, as we went over last time, is so melodious that Saraswati just, you know, puts away her vena. It's like... I just want to listen to you talk. <laughs> so uh, this is because she is, her throat chakra is the origin of all ragas. Next is 31. Kanakangada keyura kamaniya bhujanvita. Kanaka means golden. Angada means bangles or bracelets. And keyura is a type of ornament worn in the upper arms. So she's wearing these ornaments. See, nowadays we just have to put 
uh, Bhasma, <laughs> Tripundra. But in the old days, people used to wear golden ornaments on their upper arms. People today are actually poverty stricken, you know? In the old days, they had golden plates and cookware, golden ornaments all over their bodies. I mean, this was a common thing. It was an ordinary thing. But after India was plundered by various invaders and, and colonizers, now everybody is poor. And actually, everyone is poor all over the world <clears throat> because of this centralization of resources that we talked about before. This points at an interesting Vedic simile that ornaments are made of gold. Huh? They're nothing but gold. But before they were ornaments, the gold was in the ground. It was earth. Then it's taken out and refined and so on. But sooner or later, these ornaments are going to break or they're going to be lost. They're going to fall on the ground somewhere and go back into the earth. See, so the gold is always gold. Even after hundreds of millions of years, when the, the continents become seabed, uh, and then they come up again out of, the, out of the ocean and make new land, then this gold is still gold. So in the same way, Brahman is the only reality. It's the only substance. It's the origin of all the products that we see in the world. And even those products are still Brahman, just like the ornaments are only gold. Ratna Grai Veya Chintaka Lola Mukta Palanvita. She is wearing a golden pendant with embedded gems and a pearl necklace. The dangling of these ornaments is compared to the mind. The mind should dangle from her neck like her pendants. Huh? The problem with us is that we can't fix our mind on anything due to the emotional disturbances due to lust and anxiety. Uh, lust is the desire for material things in the external world, and the anxiety comes from our fear of not being able to get them. So because of this, our mind is tormented by uh, disturbances at all times, and we can't fix it. We can't just lie our, our mind at her feet uh, or dangle it from her neck like a pendant. This is our problem. Uh, and this is called... Lola Mukta Palanvita. The meaning of Lola Mukta Palanvita is that Lolas are the low-minded people who can't fix their mind, and Muktas are the people who can fix their mind on her form. And Pala means the results of meditation or austerity. So the Lolas and Muktas get the results of their practice according to their skill. Kamesha Premaratna Mani Pratipanastani. She offers her two bosoms to Kameshwara, Shiva, in return for his love. The subtle meaning is that she gives blessings to her devotees, double what they ask. So, see, this is the kind of goddess that she is. She's a very generous giver. She's not a business person. She, she doesn't measure everything, you know. She gives according to her innate generosity. She has this compassion, this all-embracing compassion that includes everyone. Every being is her child. So when she gives, she gives abundantly. She doesn't just, she's not a miser. huh? She's not a penny pincher. <laughs> so we should approach her. Why should we approach lesser gods who cannot give liberation, number one, and number two, who are very kind of stingy with their benefits? 34. Nabhya lavala romali lata pala kuchadvaya. Her two bosoms are the fruits of the creeper the line of hair that springs from her navel. The significance of this Nama 
is the navel and heart chakras. Meditating on the heart chakra by moving the energy up from the navel allows one to surpass the Brahma Granti, which is the first obstacle on the path of uh, spiritual realization. The Brahma Granti is the identification with the body, the lower three chakras, the animal part. So once we got beyond that and bring the energy into the heart, open the heart and began to have human feelings, then we start to understand bhakti and we can move to the next stage. Soundarya Lahari 76 says, Afflicted by the fire of Shiva's anger, the god of love took shelter in your navel. So this is wonderful. This Soundarya Lahari is a great poem. We began a series on it, but as usual, whenever we do a series on the scriptures, we get very few views, very little interest uh, compared to when we just rap about stuff. Well, guess what? You guys have it ba backwards. The real value is in the scriptures because by studying the scriptures and practicing their truths, that's how I get to rap about all this cool stuff. <laughs> so anyway, speaking of scriptures, the surprise I was saving for the end is soon we will start a parallel series on the Srimad Devi Bhagavatam. Now, Srimad Devi Bhagavatam is a vast work uh, with many, many, many topics. So I'm still considering exactly how to bring it out, how to present it, because to go through it shloka by shloka like this would take forever. <laughs> and so I'm going to try to organize it into several topics and present those as series, like mini-series in themselves. So anyway, we can look forward to that very soon. Aung <laughs> Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.